Hello and welcome back to another subscriber Sunday video or a masterclass video or whatever you want to call it. So today um, we've got one of my subscribers, Tim, who has sent me in a video um, basically talking about the, 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 the tapes or the stickers that, that you have on the violin. So I do teach with that method and I do think it's a really good idea. Some, te some teachers don't. It's can be a little bit controversial. I do because I feel like it gives you plenty of other things that you can focus on, for example, the bow hold, getting your fingers in tune, all the other kind of real difficulties that come with playing the violin, and trying to figure out where your fingers go. Even though it is very important, I'm not saying it isn't, you know, it's up there with oxygen and things, but it's something that that can be worked on just after you've got a little bit more of the basics down like where to bow how to bow how to hold the violin you know the real kind of foundations so he has said that he's taken them off uh, a couple of months ago but he's struggling with with it um he could do the scales but then he finds that when he's playing pieces he's his intonation is drifting drifting off and should he put them back on what should he do so I'm going to play you Tim's video. He's playing in English Country Gardens and then we'll just come back and we'll we'll discuss a few things. Okay, so from his video, I actually think his intonation is is pretty good. And honestly, I don't think that Tim needs to put the tapes back in or, you know, the, the, the stickers or whatever, the finger markings back in. As I'm sure you will probably agree, his intonation is very good. I do understand what he says when it drifts off a little bit, but I think that's just because he's losing concentration. He's not really focusing on where he's putting his fingers when he gets a little bit further on in the song. I mean, you know, he could put them back, but I feel at this stage it's not a complete disaster and he can play most of it till it gets to sort of the end of the song where I think he just his brain just gets a bit lazy or his fingers get, get a bit lazy or he's just losing a bit of focus. But the start of the song is really well in tune for someone who is of that level, obviously. So personally, I don't think... I would want to take those steps backwards and put those those tapes or the stickers back in. What does bother me about Tim's playing is his bowing and him hitting lots of other strings. So this isn't my regular violin, by the way. I've just been using this violin to make a, another video with. But I can see that he's bowing there. So he's bowing quite on the, the, the onto the fingerboard. <laughs> which gives a much, I know my strings aren't in tune, ignore that, which gives a much softer effect as well. And don't forget, the more on the fingerboard you are, the flatter that area is. So when you're near the bridge, you've got the highest kind of angle and you've got the highest curve between the strings, which means, you know, you've got G string there, D string, A string, E string. So you can see that you've got four, those four distinct levels, like moving up in a lift or in an elevator, for example. When you're playing too close to the fingerboard, for example, your G string is there, D string, A string, E string. So you can see instead of it being there, those four stages where the arm is significantly moving around, it's too flat there. So the angle of the bow from the G string, D, A and E, you can see the angle there has gotten a lot smaller. So then you compare that to playing closer to the bridge, which is where you should be, G, D, A, E. The angle is a lot wider there, so you've got more to work with. So I would be more concerned of where he's playing, where he's not getting the, the such a nice, nicer sounding tone as he could do, but also in conjunction with where he should be playing in terms of the angle of the bow. So he's hitting a lot of strings, whether he notices or notices that or not. And that's because he's playing too close to the fingerboard and he should be playing a little bit closer to the bridge. Not too close to the bridge, but if you imagine, if you just put your, if you put the hair of your bow right up to the bridge and then take it back one. So does that kind of make sense? So the width of, you know, how, how thick is your bow? Maybe like a centimeter? So you want to be a bow's width away from the uh, from where the top of the bridge is. That's generally where I tend to bow anyway because I feel I get the nicest sound there. Too close to the bridge and you get that kind of, um, I don't know, not such a nice sound. It puts my teeth on edge to, to play like that. 
Um, one other final thing that I wanted to mention as well, actually two final things I wanted to mention. I would just like to see his hand going down a little bit more. It just sort of feels a little bit further up. I know I've got a smaller hand than him being a female, but still there is no excuse for that. You, it's it's all to do with like the index finger and gripping around here. If you're kind of gripping too much around here, everything sort of tends to bunch up and come up. So I would just have everything a little bit freer around here. So you've got more of that gap sort of in, in there. I don't know if you can see that sort of in that space there between the thumb and the, uh, the index finger. So everything is just a little bit more open and not kind of so bunched up. And the final thing would just be to try and move the wrist a little bit more. So I notice when he's bowing, he's bowing quite nicely from the elbow, which is what where you want to be bowing from here, not kind of from the shoulder. But it would be nice to see his sort of wrist move a little bit more. Sometimes when you're moving from the elbow, that's great, but that'll only get you so far with the bow. When you start using more of the bow, then your arm starts to come away and sort of move a bit more. So if you start using your wrist, you know, you can take that bow just that little bit further and still keep the bow nice and straight, which again is going to help with the position, going to help with the position of the bow on the fit or not being on the fingerboard as opposed to being on the fingerboard and also help those string crossings or alleviate some of those string crossings. And it's basically the same stuff I say in pretty much all of these kind of subscriber masterclass type videos. It's the same issue that um, that beginners kind of tend to have. And that's not a bad thing. It's just something that kind of occurs as, as, you're, as you're starting out. And I guess where I come in as someone that can see those things and, and help you out. But if you guys watching this video, if you can kind of make a little checklist of all the things that I say and, you know, start to sort of think to yourself, right, am I bowing on the fingerboard? Is my wrist moving up and down enough? Um, am I holding the violin in the right place? All those kind of different things will help you progress into a much more advanced and much more pr proficient violinist. So there we go. I hope that has helped Tim and I hope that has helped any of you watching this. Um, thank you very much for watching the video and I will see you in the next video. Bye.